This one night when I arrived for work, my supervisor Dave looked confused and asked me what I was doing there. I said it's my shift tonight, and he said, but they said you called in a few hours ago saying that you were sick. I was a bit confused and said that it must have been someone else and they got the message wrong. After everyone else showed up for work that night, it was a bit more weird, but we carried on as usual and assigned everyone their places for the night. I went to work in the control room where I usually work. The control room is the center of the prison that has direct control over the cameras, doors, phones and everything. After I relieved the guard on duty and settled in for the night, I looked at the message that said I called in. It said that I had called at 7 p.m. and said that I had gotten sick while out cleaning up after the storm. There had been a storm the night before and it was a bit bad, but not anything that I had to go out to clean up. It was truly weird. My supervisor Dave came into the control room about that time. He's also a friend of mine outside work and we started talking about it and how odd it was. I decided to call my wife at home and tell her about it while he was still sitting there. I picked up the phone and dialed. After two rings, a man picked up the phone and with a raspy voice said, Hello? I did not know what to say for a few seconds. I looked at the phone to make sure I dialed the right number, and I had. After a few seconds, the person said hello again in the same raspy voice. I said, Hello? Who is this? This is Taylor. Who is this? The person replied. My head started spinning because my name is Taylor too. I said in almost a scream, Where is Anne? He then said, Anne's in bed. Who is this? I dropped the phone and told Dave to ring me out. I had to get home and I took off toward the door. I could hear Dave pick up the phone behind me and say, Hello, followed soon after by, What the hell? rather loudly. I ran to my car and drove home faster than what was legal, my mind racing the entire time. I busted through the door and my wife was sitting watching TV and was shocked at me being home. I asked her who was there and she said no one had been there. After a rather long talk with my wife, I went to call the prison to tell them what was going on, but the phone was dead. I went back to work and when I came in, Dave was acting weird and asked me, how the hell are you doing this? He told me that when I left, he picked up the phone and the person on the other end sounded like me. He kind of freaked out and hung up the phone. A minute later, as he could see my car leaving the parking lot, I called back from home and asked what the hell was going on. He said that I was a bit irate, said I was sick and did not feel like playing these games and was telling him to stop prank calling me before hanging up. After convincing him I had no idea what was going on, we went back to work. Later, I found out that the phone line for my area had been knocked down the night before by the storm. This is absolutely the strangest thing that has ever happened to me. Please drop a like and subscribe for more scary stories. A few years ago, my brother would get a call on his cell phone around 2 to 3 a.m. every night. He would answer and hear this hellish sounding noise. It's like static mixed with screams. He changed his cell number after a month of this, and it stopped. Then, after a week or so, it began again. The exact same noise. Exact same time. Finally, one day, he decided to backdial the call. It was an old man that had no clue what he was talking about. Still, the calls persisted. If he didn't answer, it would call a few more times. No messages were left. One day, he decided to say, screw it ended his contract with his phone company, switched to a new one, and then got another new number. You guessed it, the screaming static calls continued after a short delay. By this time, he was terrified every night. Unsure why this was happening, he backdialed the number again and got a different person. Around this time, he lost his job and his phone. The calls stopped, of course. His phone was disconnected now. So one day, my mum asks me to listen to this weird message she got on our home phone. It was the static screaming. We showed my brother and he was freaking out. He back dialed the number again and it said the number was disconnected this time. It's been years now and we never heard it again after that. When I was younger, my family was extremely poor and lived in a very old mobile home on some land my grandpa owned. 
This piece of land was in a very small town out in the middle of nowhere Texas and covered in woods. The town itself was your typical small country town where football was king and there was nothing to do but get drunk or high on the weekend. It was also the type of town, along with it being the early 1990s, where one didn't typically have to worry too much about locking their doors or setting an alarm. Now, our trailer was a two-bedroom, and my parents, always putting us kids ahead of themselves, slept in the living room on a fold-out couch. My room was directly connected to it, and my sister's room was down a hallway past the kitchen and bathroom at the other end of the trailer. One night, after everyone had gone to bed, my dad is woken up by a feeling that there is someone in the room. He looks around a bit and sees a large male figure sitting in the easy chair just feet from the bed. My dad quickly flipped on the light switch next to his bed and saw it was a neighbour from down the road named Carter. Carter was known to be a frequent drug user and was often in trouble with the law because of this. My dad asked him what the hell he was doing here and told him to get out. Carter responded in a scared voice, I can't get out. The demons are chasing me and your house is the only safe one. My dad, who I should mention is a fairly large and terrifying person, responded that if he didn't get out and get out quickly, that the house would be a lot less safe for him. Carter pleaded, if I leave, they'll get me. They've been chasing me all night. If they catch me, I'm dead. My dad responded that there were no demons, but that if he didn't get out of his house, he'd be dead. From what I've been told, since I was asleep for this part, my mom also hurled a few threats, and while she may not be big, she was equally as terrifying. I believe it was her anger that finally scared him off. My dad got up and locked the door and watched through the blinds as Carter decided, since he couldn't outrun the demons, he'd steal our old beta suburban that my dad always left the keys in. He drove around for about an hour, we called the police and it took them about that long to get out to us since the closest police station was about 20 or 30 minutes away. He finally brought it back and was arrested and taken to jail. He was deemed crazy and ended up locked in a mental institution. The scariest part is that for years after this, we'd get phone calls where all we'd hear is music that would have lyrics like, I'm going to kill you and we will find you, stuff like that. These calls lasted for years and followed us from house to house, even though we always had different numbers and would even be in different states. We always thought it was Carter or his demons sending us a message. The calls stopped when I was about 12. I later found out that it was around that time that Carter thought the best thing he could do for himself was soak himself in gasoline and set himself on fire. I received multiple creepy phone calls for a while, possibly from the same unknown caller. This was a time when I still had an old slider phone. One day, I got a random call asking for some girl named Sarah. I told them they had the wrong number and they immediately hung up. For the next few months, I would get these calls asking for Sarah about once or twice a week. Annoyingly, these calls would sometimes come at three in the morning. One day I got a call and like usual, I said I didn't know Sarah and after they hung up, I went to my contacts and hit redial. After I did, the machine took over and said that number did not exist. I went back through my call history, trying to call some other numbers that had called me with the same result. A machine telling me the number did not exist. I googled the phone numbers, but all I learned was that they were coming from North Dakota I started wondering what was going on, so the next time I got a call asking for Sarah, I said, oh yeah, she is right here. And the other person on the other end said, no, she isn't, and hung up. It never happened again. When I was seven, my mom and I lived up a small hill in a trailer that was right in front of the woods. My grandparents' house was at the bottom of the hill, about 100 yards away. We had no other neighbours nearby. One night, it started raining really badly and my grandmother got really nervous. She started telling my grandfather that he needed to go get me and my mother out of the trailer. He kept saying she was overreacting and there was no way in hell he was going out in that rain. After about 30 minutes of my grandmother begging, 
their phone started ringing. He answered, and it was my mom saying she needed him to come get me because the trailer was shaking. My grandpa went up a hundred yards to the trailer and knocked on the door. My mom answered and was surprised to see him. My grandfather said, I'm here to get you. My mom, looking surprised, replied, What do you mean? Grandpa then said you called me to come get you, so he was there. Mom reminded him that she couldn't call since our phone line was cut a week earlier. Grandpa paused and sputtered, then said Grandma was freaking out and to just grab me and come to their house for the night. We were halfway down the hill when lightning struck the woods and a large tree came crashing down through the roof of my bedroom. It would have killed me. My grandpa insists to this day it was my mother's voice on the phone. I was home alone, sick from school, and I went downstairs to cook some ramen noodles. Then I got a phone call from my mum saying she was coming home right away and she immediately hung up. I called her back and asked her what she meant and she was so confused and she said she didn't ever call me. That's odd because the caller ID showed her name and that definitely sounded like her voice. Then, while cooking my ramen noodles, I heard knocking on my sliding glass door and I could see that there was a guy looking through the blinds covering the sliding door. He then attempted to open the door a bit forcefully a couple of times. The way our kitchen is set up is a long hallway type of thing. If you're in the kitchen, you can see the dining room and right next to the dining room is the sliding glass door. It was pretty scary and I didn't know what to do, so I turned off the stove ran upstairs and called my mum to get home right then. After that, the knocking stopped. I had a friend pass away more than 10 years ago. A few days after he had died, some friends and I were sitting in my car, chatting about him. While I was talking about a funny memory with the guy, my phone started ringing, but all it says is, incoming call. There was no number or anything. I flipped open my phone to answer it, but I can't answer it. It just kept ringing, even when I pressed answer over and over. It rings and rings, and I eventually take out the phone's battery. And it still rings. That's when all of us got really freaked. Unsure what to do, we just stayed there in the car, staring at the illuminated phone screen. It rang for almost two full minutes, then it stopped. It scared us at the time, but it was also kind of comforting in an odd way. 